If you've never made pasta carbonara, you're in for a treat. It's a quick pasta dish that only requires five ingredients. Pasta, bacon or prosciutto, pecorino romano cheese, eggs, and pepper. It is by far the easiest and most difficult pasta dish that you will ever make because it's not really about the ingredients, it's all about adjusting the temperature. You can be rewarded with a pasta that will have your friends and family saying, damn, I want some more of that. Or a cheesy, bacony, scrambled egg mess with pasta. It's still good, either way. But trust me, it's all about adjusting your temperature. So rather than taking any more of your time, let's get started with this dish and this year's keynote, Adjust Your Temperature. Let's begin with your vision for this school year. What do you want your classroom to look like? Do you have a theme? What do you want to see and accomplish this school year? Based on maybe some previous data and reflections, what are you going to work on this year? What do you want to be gooder at? I apologize to all you English teachers who are going to tell me gooder is not a word and you can't end with a preposition. I know that. Just hear me out. Dickerisi. Do you want to improve maybe with some content in your area? Is it maybe a teacher standard? Maybe you're finally going to drop the remote, turn off the real fathers of Corpus Christi and pick up that book you know you need to read. Can you imagine a show about the real house fathers? It'd be pretty boring. One dad jumping up and cutting the grass because his neighbor just cut his. As men, you know that once your neighbor cuts his grass, you officially have 24 hours to cut yours. Anyway, let's get back to the keynote. The vision is how we begin our meal as well. Let's gather our ingredients to ensure we have what is needed to bring our vision of carbonara to reality. Let's get these ingredients ready and chat setting up your workspace. As this summer comes to an end, you're probably thinking about your classroom, the theme of your class, the borders you're gonna need from Amazon, and all the things that make your classroom yours. That's awesome because you're starting with that vision. Now that I have my ingredients for our pasta, I'm going to start by cooking some bacon in a cold pan so the bacon releases its fat and crisps up. You don't want to put bacon in a hot pan. While that slowly cooks, I'm going to separate and scramble four eggs and one whole egg in this bowl. Next, I'm going to mix about one cup of grated Pecorino Romano cheese. You want to mix this until you make a nice thick paste. Oh, I forgot to mention that this should be enough to feed four people. As far as leftovers, not sure. Psst. We didn't have any leftovers in our family. While you're waiting on that bacon to cook down, let's chat more about your room and the ingredients that make your room yours. At some point, you're gonna be hyper-focused on your room and all of the minutia that comes along with it. That's when you're going to have to adjust your temperature. Don't make your primary focus the room. Take a step back a little bit and think about what is going to be happening in this room. The lessons, projects, activities, and experiences. Let's adjust the temperature a bit to make sure we don't burn ourselves by focusing on the room, decorations, and layout. And it's time for me to adjust the temperature on this bacon. It's cooking down pretty well right now and starting to get that perfect caramelization, so let's turn the heat down and not burn the bacon. Now that it's done, let's take it out of the pan and onto a plate and drain the fat. Keep it because you're going to be using some of this liquid gold later. Now, let's start cooking our pasta. If I need to explain to you how to cook pasta, then I don't know what to tell you. Google it. The only difference with pasta for carbonara is that you're not going to salt the water. There's enough salt in our pecorino cheese and bacon. If you salt your water for this, you might just not be able to make a fist the next day because of all that sodium. In this dish, I'm gonna use bucatini because it has this hole that runs through the entire length of the pasta. This is perfect for our sauce to hide in. Now let's talk about different ways to hide your content for your students. You've probably got some devices in your room now that we're post COVID. Some of you are not excited about this and some of you are. Whatever the case may be, this is a reality that you have to deal with. It's 2022. If you can't deal with devices in your room, leave the profession right now. Technology is not the future, it is the present. It was the future back in the past. At times, you're gonna find yourself going real hard with these devices. You've prob you're probably gonna hit a point when you realize that you're having students on devices for the sake of just having them on devices. No real intention or impact. 
Simple substitution. When this happens, it's time to adjust the temperature. Ease back on the usage and mix it up a bit. Maybe do some stations or smaller scale tasks that require some collaboration. This can be done without devices. If you still want to incorporate them, do so by maybe making the reflection something that is done with technology, or maybe the presentation is done through tech, but not the entire project. The opposite will also occur. You'll find yourself not touching those devices because of a fear or comfort level that you have by doing things without tech. When this happens, adjust the temperature and maybe turn the tech up a bit. If you find yourself arguing that students don't need to be using tech in the classroom, ask yourself this, how will they take the state exam that your school is gonna be judged by? That will probably be online, and the last thing you want is your students doing poorly, not because they don't know the content, but because they weren't familiar with the techniques used on this digital assessment. Let's check on our pasta. Looks like it's ready to go. We only want to cook this maybe about four-fifths of the way through, so read the instructions on the pasta package and somehow multiply it by four-fifths. Try doing this without pulling out a calculator or your phone. Let's go ahead and reserve about a cup of that starchy pasta water. That's actually the secret to this sauce. This water will make a creamy sauce that is the perfect consistency for this dish. Let's drain the rest of it and throw the pasta back into the pan with that liquid gold. Let's turn on this heat to medium low and move the pasta around so that it's covered in that fat. Don't let the pasta burn, so you're gonna have to do what? That's right, ladies and gentlemen, adjust the heat. Now let's add about a tablespoon of pasta water to our egg and cheese paste. What we're trying to do is bring the eggs up to temperature without scrambling them. So we're gonna go slowly adding a little bit of water at a time until the paste is a bit runnier than when we started. Let's go ahead and shut off the heat and add in our paste. Now once this is in, things are gonna happen real quickly, so make sure that you have some sort of rubber spatula to mix quickly. Kinda like the school year. Once your students come into class on the first day, things are going to happen quickly. You're gonna find yourself putting out fires, starting fires, going to meetings, planning, grading, and all of the, of the other things that come along with becoming and being an educator. At times, there's a lot of self-pride in our profession. This is my classroom, my students, and my responsibility. Don't forget that there are people out there willing to help you out and lighten your load. Districts have specialists, coaches, and other support staff who are ready to help out. I'm actually one of those in my district, and I don't like to force my way into classrooms to work with teachers. So teachers, know that we're out there and ready to help, so don't be afraid to ask of help for the help when needed. Specialist, when you see teachers in need of help, let's step up and do what we can for them. But how do I know when teachers need help? Um, trust me, we know. We've seen those faces, we've heard the groans, the breaths, and the other cues that let us know. Speaking of noises, let's check out this pasta. Things are happening and we're cooking now. If the sauce is too thick or looks like it's starting to scramble, add a bit of pasta water, stir vigorously, and take the pan off the heat. Remember, adjust the temperature. Keep this going until you've reached a consistency you're satisfied with. When it's done, make sure it's off the heat and it's time to add in the pepper. Lots of it and the bacon. I like to just crumble it up and put it back in the pan. If you've adjusted the heat correctly, you'll be rewarded with a dish unlike any other. The best thing about this dish, it's sugar, gluten, and fat free if you don't eat it. And if you do the same during the school year, you'll also be rewarded with the successful school year that you've been waiting for, both academically, mentally, and spiritually. That's what I love about education and food. They nourish us and make us feel complete and that we have purpose. What is my purpose? My purpose is to help educators like you reach your potential you didn't realize that you had. I also enjoy cooking with and for my family. Those two things allow me to rest my head at night knowing that I have purpose in this world to my wife, my children, and all of the educators that I support. I might not be able to feed every educator with food, but I guarantee that I can feed your soul with food for thought. And now it's time to eat. Thank you, educators, for all you do, and I wish you the best school year yet. Make sure you subscribe for more content like this and more cooking tutorials like this as well. I don't know about you, but I'm especially excited for this school year and even more excited about this pasta carbonara. Buen provecho.